Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video, I'm going to do an introduction to the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So first, before I start talking about these functions right here, let's go ahead and look at this right triangle. So all three of these functions can be thought of as some sort of relationship between an angle and the sides of a right triangle. So right here, this dashed line is a 90 degree angle, and the side that's always opposite of the 90 degree angle is the side we call the hypotenuse. Now, the opposite and adjacent sides of the triangle really depend on what angle we're looking at. So if we're looking at the angle theta that I've drawn here, then the opposite side of this angle is right over here. This is the opposite side of theta. The adjacent side is the side of the triangle that borders the angle theta. So for example, if I was to have a second angle up here, which I'll just call alpha, then according to alpha, this side down here is now the opposite side, and this side that borders alpha would be the adjacent side. But for this tutorial, let's just go ahead and stick with theta. So for all three of these trigonometric functions, we're going to input an angle, and we're going to get out a value, a relationship between two of these sides. So our functions are going to look something like this. I'll put t for trigonometric function, and then it's going to take an input of an angle, which we're calling theta, and then the output is going to just be, I'll put r for ratio. So if we were to look at the sine of some function, what we're really looking at is we're looking at the relationship between the opposite side of our angle and the hypotenuse. So the sine of some angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So for our example here, the value of sine theta is equal to the length of this side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So that's what sine of theta is. And so the standard way to write sine of theta is just like this, S-I-N, and then we take an argument of theta. So the sine of theta is equal to the side of the triangle that is opposite of theta divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So what about cosine now? The cosine of some angle is equal to the adjacent side of that angle divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So the cosine of theta is going to be this side right here divided by the hypotenuse. So by convention, we write cosine as C O S, and then we input an angle theta, and the cosine of an angle theta is equal to the side of the triangle that is adjacent to our angle theta divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So what about tangent? Well, tangent can actually be thought of in a couple different ways. The most simple case is the tangent of some angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the tangent is equal to the length of the side that is opposite of the angle we're looking at divided by the side of the triangle that is adjacent to our angle. The way we write tangent is tan of theta. So the tangent of theta is equal to the side that is opposite of our angle divided by the side that is adjacent to our angle. So tangent can also be thought of in a different way. The tangent of some angle theta is also equal to the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of that angle. Oftentimes you'll see sine of theta and cosine of theta written like this without the parentheses here. You can write it either way you're comfortable with. When you first get started, oftentimes it's easier to put these parentheses around the argument so that way you know exactly what part of this is the argument. As you get more used to using sine and cosine, oftentimes you'll switch to simply just putting the angle right after the sine and cosine term. With that being said, the reason why the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta is because the sine of theta up here is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have opposite over a hypotenuse, and then that's divided by the cosine of theta. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we have adjacent over hypotenuse. And so now we have a division of two fractions. So when we have a division of fractions, we simply multiply the numerator 
by the inverse of the denominator. So the numerator is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And then that's multiplied by the inverse of the denominator. Well, the inverse is simply h over a. So we have h over a. So to get the inverse, we just simply flip the numerator and the denominator. That gives us the inverse. And so now here we have opposite times hypotenuse divided by hypotenuse times adjacent. Well, hypotenuse can cancel with hypotenuse, which simply leaves us with opposite over adjacent is equal to our tangent of theta. So we have here our tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, which is also the same thing as the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So let's just do a really quick example right now. So if I was to say that the adjacent side of theta has a length of three, and the side that is opposite of theta has a length of four, then by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the hypotenuse is equal to five. So I'm not going to cover the Pythagorean theorem in this video, but I do have a video on the Pythagorean theorem on my channel if you guys want to take a look at how that's done. So anyway, let's just go ahead and do some examples here. So for our example, let's go ahead and take a look at the sine of theta. So the sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So theta is right here. The side opposite of theta is four. So the sine of theta is equal to four divided by the hypotenuse, which is five. So the sine of theta for this triangle right here would be four divided by five. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So the side adjacent to theta has a value of three and the hypotenuse has a value of five. So the cosine of theta would be equal to three divided by five. So now looking at the tangent of theta, there's two different ways we can do this now. We can either just take four over five and divide that by three over five, or we can simply just look at the opposite side of theta and divide it by the side that is adjacent to theta. Let's first look at this approach. Let's look at the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So we have the tangent of theta, and that is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. So the sine of theta here we have to be four over five. So we have four over five, and then that's divided by the cosine of theta, which is three divided by five. So we have three over five. And so now to divide two fractions, we simply multiply the numerator by the inverse of the denominator. And the inverse would be just flipping the numerator and denominator. So this becomes five over three, and then five and the five cancel, which equals four divided by three is our tangent of theta. So now notice that we did this by taking the sine over cosine approach, and we ended up with a result that matches the tangent definition by itself. So the tangent is the opposite over adjacent. By doing the sine over cosine method, we still ended up with the opposite over the adjacent. So here we have four, which is the opposite, and three, which is the adjacent. So anyway, that was an introduction to trigonometric functions. Um, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments. You guys have an excellent day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.